And speaking of beveling, let's go ahead and talk about beveling. Uh, let's go and, you know what, let's go ahead and initialize this thing again. Let's go to initialize a Q cylinder in the Y. And let's go ahead and up our resolution to like three. So three tab, three tab, three tab. Hit Q cylinder in the Y. And now hopefully, if I go along here, I can do possibly a bevel edge loop complete. So if I go along the edge here and do a bevel, it'll bevel at it. I don't, you know what? I really don't like this cylinder in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my brush menu here and I'm going to go to my insert. And I have an insert multi mesh Q mesh insert brush. So when I select this one and I hit M, you're going to see a lot of cool things in here. And actually, I I didn't steal this from Joseph Dress, he gave it to us. Joseph Dress made this, and it's basically a bunch of initialized shapes that he likes to use when he's uh, box modeling. And I've added my own over here, like cylinders and uh, some rings and some X symmetrical cylinders here along the side. Um, so if I want to start out with a one by one cube, it's already there. In this case, I want to do a polarized 12 cylinder. So I'm going to select this one, and then I'm going to go to my modify geometry, modify topology, and I'm going to do mesh from brush. And it's going to take that cylinder and just replace my initialized shape with that cylinder. So how did I make that insert mesh brush? Well, you can go and watch the insert mesh video and you can see exactly how I did that. However, if just one one warning before you do that, uh, let's go ahead and say you want to start making your own brushes. So you're going to grab a cylinder 3D and you're going to, it's a primitive, so you can go in here to initialize and you can say, you know what, I don't need an H divide. Well, I want 12 H divide, oops, and I want zero V divides. I want it to be really simple, no tapers. This is this is fine. This is exactly what I did actually. And then I'm going to go make poly mesh 3D. One thing I would suggest doing is go ahead and weld points. So if I hit Control D on this thing, sometimes what can happen is it'll open up a hole down the middle. To avoid that, it's not doesn't seem to be happening. But just play it safe. Go to geometry, go to modify topology, and then just do this weld points, and that'll weld any overlapping points. And if there, you know, there's a weld distance if the points are within a certain distance. But because these points are overlapping, just go ahead and just play it safe. Hit that weld points, and then go to B, create insert mesh, new or a pen, depending on if you're building your own. And then you'll have all of those options available to you, like so. So whatever is useful to you while you're box modeling, just make an insert mesh brush and just go grab what you need. Anyways, we'll go back to our cylinder here. And so let's go ahead and do an insert multiple edge loops. We'll just insert some multiple edge loops along the side here. And along this bevel here, we can bevel an edge loop complete. What that means is if we bevel this edge, it's going to bevel this whole edge loop here. And if we go in here to these options, you can do an edge loop partial, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, you can also bevel a poly loop. So you can actually go and you can like bevel a poly loop. Or if you go to this one, so we bevel an edge loop complete on this, these ones in here, it'll take that one line and bevel it into two. Or you can do edge loop complete. You can do single row. You can do two rows. So there's two in there with a line down the middle. If you tell it linear edge, it's just going to do a linear edge with two rows in here. You can do four rows or eight rows. And now if we do eight rows, they're all equally subdivided, right? However, if we do eight rows on a sharp edge, what that's going to do is push most of those rows towards the edge. So remember when you were talking about when we hit D, you know, if you put more edges towards another edge, it's going to kind of sharpen those edges up. This does that automatically for you. So I'm going to hit Shift D here. If you want to do that manually, let's undo that. Let's go ahead and do a bevel edge loop complete single row. And then we hit D, you're going to see, oh, it's a really soft, smooth transition. However, if you go in here and you do insert single edge loop and you just put some edge loops right around the edge there and then hit D. You're going to see how it kind of sharpens up. So instead of doing that, what you can do is you can tell this thing while I'm beveling, give me, oops, let's go ahead and bevel, edge loop complete, single, let's do eight rows, sharp edge, and when we do that it's going to push those out to the side here. If, in fact, if we do a sharp edge, edge sharpness of a hundred, it's really going to push them really far out there. So when you hit D, that is going to be look like a creased edge. In fact, it looks like it's doing some weird stuff with the geometry. So let's not do that. So that's that. So now let's say we want to take, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go Q mesh of poly. I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm just going to tag all of these as white polygons, poly groups, which means it's going to treat it as a single one. So even with Q mesh single poly, 
it's going to polygroup those out. And I can keep doing this. Now, Now in this case, if I do a QMesh a single poly, it's just going to do these ones. However, if I do QMesh polygroup all, it's going to take all these peach polygroups and QMesh them out. Cool, huh? Now, if I do bevel edge loop complete, it's going to bevel that edge loop here. If I do a bevel edge loop complete here, it's going to go all the way around. However, if I do bevel, and actually let's do um, bevel edge loop complete single row linear edge. There we go. Now I'd expect that to kind of bevel around here. I can show you how to do that in a second. Um, so we're going to bevel this whole edge loop here. However, if we do edge loop partial, what it'll do is it'll go and start beveling an edge loop until it, it hits. Uh, so see how this edge comes into this point, and then this edge comes into this point, this edge comes into this point. ZBrush sees that as a kind of a flag to tell it this is a partial loop, and then it continues around. So that'll treat that as a partial loop here. They won't even do that one and it'll treat this one as a partial loop. So you gotta tell it edge loop complete and it'll force it all the way around. So just FYI. Now I did say when I was going to here and doing a bevel edge loop complete, it wasn't doing exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, there's kind of a way around that and that is with, if you go in here to add to curve, you can actually click on these edges here. Now when I add to curve here, holding on an edge, uh, basically I can tell it, so right now it, by default it's on delete curve. So if I go, hover, go over a curve and hit delete, It'll go ahead and delete those curves. However, it looks like add to curve isn't going to do it symmetrically. So I'm going to go ahead and hit X, and I'm just going to do this asymmetrically here. So you're going to go in here, and then if you want to delete a curve, you can delete a curve just by tapping it. And that's the default action. So you can either add curves and delete curves. And then once, you've, once you're done adding your curves here, what you can tell it to do is, okay, I've got curves here. Now go ahead and bevel my, all my curves. And this here's my bevel options. And then you can just tell it, hey, bevel my curves. So you can kind of force it to bevel your curves here. Let's try, let's, let's do something, let's try something here, because I think a curve is a curve is a curve. So if we go over here, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna isolate this, and then I'm gonna go to stroke, and we're gonna do our curve function, border, frame our mesh, and now if we bring everything back, we framed our mesh with a curve, and if we go in here to our bevel all curves, curve actions, yeah, no problem. So. Like I said, a curve is a curve is a curve. You know, you guys know how to make curves. We've been over this before, so cheat the system. In fact, if you want to do a um, brush insert, let's do a brush curve tube, then just go ahead and update these. It should update that to a curve tube. Or if you want like brush insert curve with a hose, now you have a hose running along this. Of course, you can make your hose bigger or smaller or whatever. So use curves however you want uh, once you've created them.